So tell me, what is it like to travel the world as one of the most famous fighters on the planet? <laughs> well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I feel very lucky uh, and uh, very blessed to, to have had the, uh, the career that I had um, and the support of the fan, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it motivates me to keep uh, hanging out <laughs> in here with you guys. <laughs> Is it easier to enjoy the events now that like, you're not competing, oh. that you're just going? A hundred percent. When I was competing, and uh, the day of the fight was the worst day of my life, you know, yeah. and, and now I can enjoy it. It's a lot more fun, <laughs> a, lot, a lot less stressful. And also, because the fighters aren't calling you out all the time as well. Well, I, I, yeah, exactly. It's a lot of stress fighting. Fighting, it's fun when you win, but the, all the, the waiting part before the fight, it's, it's unbearable. It's, it's, I, 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 I never liked it. Yeah. Um, I like to win, of course, and the freedom that it gives me and all the, the life that it gives me. But the, the not knowing if I'm going to win or being uh, humiliated or badly hurt or winning, uh, that's unbearable, you know what I mean? So I, I know what the fighters are going through right now. It's, it's, uh, it's very hard, but uh, tonight it's going to be, uh, not tonight, tomorrow night it will be over. <laughs> do, you, do you remember what it was like when, when you were in the hotel and you were about to, to face off with your opponent, maybe for the first time, and just what that moment was like? Did, did you look forward to that? Did you feel like you got something from it? I never focused on meeting my opponent before the fight I always focused on the fight itself I was more preoccupied on how I'm gonna win the fight mm -hmm. than how I'm gonna look like in front of my opponent yes. I, I I think a lot of guys are f not focusing on the right thing mm -hmm. um, I was always very good at focusing on the right thing that's why I think it gives me an edge uh, for the fight I was focusing on how I'm gonna win the fight but I kept running scenarios in my head over and over again and then the week of the fight you actually I never slept very very well so because I was running those scenarios and it, it drive me mad until the fight is over D did it ever scare you because sometimes if you're not sleeping you're like oh, I'm not sleeping or I'm not eating what I should be did, did that part make you nervous for the fight absolutely in the beginning of my, of my career I, I I remember I couldn't sleep well and I, and I thought that later on in my career maybe with some experience I'll, I'll, I'll pass that and I'll, I'll find a way to, to relax and mm -hmm. to be able to, to have more, more fun but I realized over time that every fight gets bigger and bigger and things get worse. The only thing that changes is not that you're not stressed anymore, it's the fact that you know that it's normal to not sleep well before the fight and yes. you, you realize that it's normal to have the the butterflies exactly. you learn how to make those butterflies fly in formation <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so trying to do some po poetry here <laughs> <coughs> and you told me that you know it's it's the worst day of your life the day that you have to fight until after so why did you keep doing it <laughs> you know like why do you yeah. keep putting yourself it's a good question <laughs> i'm gonna try to answer it the best as i can is yes it's true i never like to fight never i, I hate it the worst day of my life. However, in order to keep my freedom, yeah. my wealth, my my health, because of course there's a risk, but it, it's a healthy lifestyle to be a if you want to be a good fighter. And I love to train. I love my sport. I like the 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 lifestyle. I like the access of things that it gives me that other people does not have. In order to keep all that, I needed to compete. Yeah. That's why I did it yeah. to maintain my my lifestyle You're and free. to have the the life that I have there now you know I'm able to retire uh, I was able to retire at 36 years old and to do whatever I want to do anytime with who I want to do where I wanted to do it's a it's it's a price the price that I needed to pay it was was to fight you know what I mean I think it was worth it yeah. for for me but unfortunately it's it's a reality that it's it's very rare, you know, I'm, I feel very lucky and privileged to have succeed in, in this game, but only a few have made it and I'm, um, I, I, I really appreciate the, the support that I have from the fans because of the fans that I was able to, to make a living out of this. Yeah. Do you feel like 
because uh, I'd, I'd gone to Montreal and I saw you at the gym and you're always training and do you feel you can see when fighters uh, have the potential to, to be that small 1%? Do you feel like you can see it? You, you, you see a lot of talented guys sometimes, but it takes more than that. You know, I think it takes the talent, the hard work, but also down the line, sometime on the way up, when success starts to come, it can make some guys derail from their 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 path where they they need they wanted to go and i felt i feel like i i was very lucky to have had the all the mentors that i had the, the my parents also my family the way the, the life that i had um i was very lucky things could have turned very differently for me uh, and i think for Every fighter, there's a, the component of being the, the talent. Of course, you're, you're born with a certain skills, a certain certain predisposition. Mm -hmm. You have to hard to to work very hard. There's also an element of, uh, I guess, it's my ignorance that that make it make makes it call it luck. There's an element of luck that I don't know a X factor that yeah. will define if someone will have success or not. Well, luck favors the prepared, so. Exactly <laughs> you help, you helped yourself out yeah. there quite a lot. And lastly, is you know you're considered one of the greatest martial artists and one of the greatest welterweights of all time. And there's always people going to try to surpass that. And does it bother you now that you can't you can't fight them for that <laughs> spot? You, do you know what I mean? There will always be another guy and another guy and another guy. And the best fighter that ever lives is not. Is not born yet. What I mean is that in in, a, in combat sport, it's very subjective. We always try to find out who will win between Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali or Tyson Fury. The truth is, as time goes by, performances get better. And how I can prove that is that just look the 100 meter. We know that Usain Bolt has a better performance than Jesse Owen. Is it because he's really better or is it because he had access to more knowledge and technology? That's the thing. So the fighters of today are better than the fighters of tomorrow. Yes. Uh, 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 the fighters of today are better than the fighters of yesterday. But the fighters of tomorrow will be better than the fighters of today. Not because they're physically better or, or you know, you know, yeah, they're, they're yeah, really absolutely. better. It's because they have access to better knowledge, technology, and tools that allow them to execute better performances. So what Einstein, tool did you wish you had? Uh, Einstein said it, even in science, is the same thing than in, in performance and sport. Is we, if I've seen further than my predecessor, it's because I have, I'm standing on shoulders of giant. Same thing. Royce Gracie, Mark Coleman, uh, Ken Shamrock, all these guys, they paved, they paved the way for me. And, and that I maybe paved the way for other guys in the future to surpass me. Yeah. Well, lastly, I just wanted to ask you, of course, we're in Paris. Do you, do you wish that, that you could have fought in Paris? I wish I would have fought in Paris. I, um, <clears throat> I remember I, when I was competing, I was begging Lorenzo Ferti to, to please make a make a show in Paris but uh, at this at the time the sport was illegal and I, I wish I would have fought in Paris because my my origin are, are French you know I'm French Canadian but uh, unfortunately it, it never happened but uh, I'm very happy fortunately now to be here today to <laughs> witness the first UFC uh, in Paris in France is this your first time it's my no it's not, not my first time that in that I'm in, in France, France. Okay. but it's the first time that UFC uh, organize a, yeah, a, yes, a, a, a show in, in France. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, any predictions on the main event? Any <coughs> things you can? I'm biased. I'm I'm <laughs> friend with uh, Cyril Gann. You know, of course, I, I my my heart is with him. <laughs> However, he's gonna have a uh, he's gonna have a hell of a challenge. Uh, I believe uh, to win, he needs to make a a clean fight because if he gets into a slugfest, yes. Tuivesa, it's very good at putting his opponent 
is at, at putting their their opponents back against the fence and and get into slugfest. He's very good in what we call dirty boxing, and and I believe Cyril Gann need to uh, need to avoid this at all costs. You know, otherwise it will be like making the fight on a coin toss and he does not want to do that with Tuivasa because he has a lot of power. Cyril Gann has a lot of tools, all his uh, creativity is uh, he's very good at, at striking, keep, it, keep controlling the distance and I think that's what he needs to do, uh, especially in, in the striking department to win the fight. Do you think it favors him that it's five rounds as well? I'm not sure because uh, yeah, maybe in, on the experience edge he did a five round once but uh, as the fight goes on, if he gets tired, if he loses his leg and his mobility, mm -hmm. and Tuivasa is able to to close the distance and, and bring, put Cyril against the fence, I think Cyril needs to avoid getting his back against the fence. He needs to stay in the middle of the octagon and use his, his mobility, his footwork, um, in order to to, to, to help point uh, Tuivasa and perhaps uh, create opportunity in order to, to finish him. You think if he gets the win tonight, like he will eventually become the heavyweight champion? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I think uh, Cyril has all the skills to become a great champion, uh, to become a legend in the sport. He, he, he's a very charismatic uh, mm -hmm. athlete as well. Um, he's not only a, a, a good performer, he's, uh, he's a charismatic athlete, which means that like people want to see him. Come, the, 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 he's going to have big sponsorship and he still he, he already has but he the the best is coming for him you know i believe so yeah, and at we've asked the same thing he's a he's a he's a character on his own you know what i mean that you so you have a we have a clash tonight of two different style of fighters that are very charismatic yeah. would, would you let him do a shoey with Oh, you will. If he wins the fight, of course he wins. He, 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 will, he will do it, but uh, if he loses, I don't think it will be worth it. <laughs>